Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Stephen Brooks, and welcome today to our online internet church service. I'm so happy that you are here to hear and receive the Word of God, because we both know that it has the power to change our lives and transform us into the image of Jesus, and we are very excited about that. Today, I want you to take your Bibles, meet me in Genesis chapter 12, and let's open up today by receiving the holy tithes and offerings. And I want you to understand how the blessing of the Lord is on your life for prosperity. Praise God. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. Now, now the, the blessings on his life, the pronouncement of blessing and goodness over his life continues. But I want you to understand that God told Abram, I will bless you. Now, Genesis chapter 13, we see that that blessing has really began to kick in gear. Verse 2, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. So the Lord, the Lord's blessing is touching the life of Abram in a very real way. And it's important that you understand the blessing of God working in your life as a believer to empower you to prosper. That's what the word bless means. In the ancient Hebrew language, it literally means right here in the Bible, it means empowered by God to prosper. Praise the Lord. Now, here in Genesis chapter 13, it says in verse 5, Lot also who went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents. So Lot, who's hanging around with Uncle Abram, whose name later, of course, is changed to Abraham. But here's Lot hanging out with his uncle. And because the blessing is on Abram so strong, Lot gets in proximity of that blessing, and it begins to touch his life as well. But remember, the blessings on Abram, but Lot, through association, is being impacted by the blessing that is upon the great man of faith, Abram. Now, it says in verse 6, Now the land was not able to support them, that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. Verse 8 is very important. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. It's not the whole land before you. Please separate from me. Now watch what he says to him. Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. Now, why is Abram willing to do this? After all, he's the elderly person. He's the one that the nephew should look up and honor and respect and say, and say you know, uncle, everything I've got is because of the God's blessing on your life and, uh, you know, my being in proximity to you. So, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the one that moves and I'm going to show you honor. But it's Abram who steps forward and says, Lot, you choose. And whatever you choose, I'll go the other direction. Why would Abram do that? Woo, praise God. Now, here's something you need to understand, because this is very relevant to your life. Abram knew that the blessing of God was on his life. What does that mean? It means wherever you go, wherever you go in the Lord, that blessing is on you and it goes with you. So it doesn't matter if Lot says, I want that piece of land. Okay, well, I'll go over here. Why? Because I'm going to be blessed over here. Well, I want to go over there. Okay, well, you go over here, then I'll go over there. It doesn't matter what Abram does. Why? He's blessed and he's not following the blessing. The blessing is on him. Oh, praise the Lord. It's very important to understand also in Galatians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul said that what Jesus did for us at Calvary 
made it possible for that same blessing to come on the Gentiles. And of course, that's many of us, unless you're Jewish. But my friends, that blessing can now come on the Gentiles in Christ. So the Christian believers now have the very same blessing that Abram Abram had upon his life. And you need to trust the Lord to walk in that empowerment of the blessing. I'm telling you, it's there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it will carry you into everything that God wants you to be walking in. It is, it is the, it's the power of God to it step into and enjoy the things that God has prepared for you. And it doesn't matter uh, in a sense where you're at. Now I know God has geographical assignments and locations and we all need to be in our place. But I think you see the point I'm trying to make the blessings on you. And so even if you go over here, the blessings on you over there and, and Abram understood that. That's why he said, Lot, you can go over here if you want. I'll go over here because the blessing's still on me. You can do whatever you want. Woo, praise God. I'm telling you, this blessing, this blessing is very, very real. In the Old Testament, you see two things. You see the blessing and the curse. And they are both very, very real, just as real as this desk that my Bible is sitting on, just as real as my, my coffee cup. Uh, the, these are real, tangible things, the blessing and the curse. I, I, I think some Christians perhaps have more faith in the strength of the curse, the power of sin, than they do in the redemptive act of Christ and our ability to walk in the blessing. I want you to focus on the blessing. Mm, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now say this today, as you're going to bring the tithes and offerings into the storehouse, say this, say, I am blessed. I am empowered to prosper. Now you need to believe that and you need to expect that because that is your position in Christ. Praise God. That's the Bible. That's the, that's the new Testament. You can't get any more new Testament than Galatians chapter three, where the blessing is revealed as now being upon the church. Woo. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now today, as you bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse of God, if you're writing the check or if you're going online, I want you to put a little notation on your giving. And I want you to say, I am blessed. Not that I'm going to be blessed. I don't want you to say that. I want you to say, I am blessed. Woo! Because if you're in Christ, that blessing is on you and you need to be expecting it to work. Praise the Lord. I feel, I feel compassion for church members that belong to churches where the pastors do not teach the people the laws of prosperity. And, you know, they just pass a, bu- pack, uh, pass a bucket or, you know, a basket, and they never teach the people about sowing or reaping or tithing or anything like that. And because of that, so many of God's people are in spiritual ignorance, even if they are smart people. You can be a smart person, but still be in darkness or spiritual ignorance because you don't understand how this works praise the Lord. But when you begin to work the word and the inter- the eternal principles of God's word, you will be walking my friends in continual abundance. Woo. Praise God. Hallelujah. So today, as you're honoring the Lord with your finances, you're obeying the Lord by bringing the tithe into the storehouse. I want you to write on your note and I want you to put, I am blessed praise the Lord. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to have to read it. I sense in my spirit, there are some people out there that are going, I I, I don't know, Pastor Stephen, could it really be true that such a blessing that was on Abram's life that he was so cognizant of and worked so profusely in his life, could it really, could it really be uh, something that now belongs to us? Praise God. Let's see what the good book says. Uh, This is Galatians chapter 3. Verse 12, yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing, I told you it was in there. 
Oh, hallelujah. Receive it and expect it to be working in your life. God empowering you to prosper. You don't need any power to fail. You need power to prosper. Woo, praise the Lord that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So it's not just for the Gentiles, it's for the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, the believers. Woo, hallelujah. That's you and that is me. Praise God that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Praise the Lord. So if you are mailing in your tithes and offerings, put that note on your check, on your giving, and, and say, I am blessed, and send it to Stephen Brooks International, P.O. Box 3456, Mooresville, North Carolina, our zip code 28117. If you're bringing in your tithes and offerings online, Put that little notation in that donation box and say, I am blessed because you are. Woo, praise the Lord. Always agree with Scripture. Always agree with what God said. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you can go there and make your donation. You can bring the tithe and offering in now. Stephenbrooks.org. There is a link on the homepage called Tithes and Offerings. Sow and Reap. And you can go there right now and honor the Lord and watch the power of the blessing. Touch your life in the area of your finances. Woo! Yes. I say it unapologetically. Let the Lord touch you in the area of your finances. Pastor Stephen, we just only need to be spiritually blessed. Oh, you're only going to be spiritually blessed. You're saved. But if you have a toothache, you can't do anything about it. Not even take an aspirin because you can't afford to go out and buy any ibuprofen. No, no, you need prosperity for your blessing and for the extension of the blessing by reaching into the lives of others as a witness of Christ. Jesus is in heaven. So we are his hands, his feet. We, we're the ones that have to do these works and he does them through us. And when you have financial strength, you can do it all in the name of the Lord of those that you bless. Praise God forever. Heavenly Father, I pray over your precious people as they honor you with their tithes and their offerings. Bless them mightily in their finances. Let them be financial champions dry up all debt, and let abundance be their ongoing testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please take your Holy Bibles and turn with me to the book of Jude, right before Revelation. It's not really a book. It's just a little epistle, a little tiny letter, only has what we would call one chapter. And we want, to, we want to launch off today from Jude, and we're going to look today at verse, verse 20, and I want to talk to you about this dynamic grace that we have of being able to pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues, and I think uh, for many of you, it's like having a tremendous weapon that can be used against the enemy, and you've never picked it up and pulled the trigger. Or if you have, I think some of you, of course, have, but maybe you've only been using like what they would call a uh, semi-automatic weapon. Semi-automatic is you, you just pull the trigger, you know, you know, as long as you've got bullets, uh, you just pull the trigger as fast as you can with your finger. Uh, and, you know, of course, your bullets run out and your finger could get, t- get tired. But full automatic is just coming out just as, I mean, the machine's pushing it out. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to take you over in the full automatic praying where you go over into the deep things of God and get over into the glory realm and watch God begin to do some great and some mighty things. I want to tell a great testimony of what God did in my life one day. It was life changing. I don't say that lightly. I don't want to use the word life changing lightly, but this was a day that changed my life after I had prayed in tongues for 15 hours non-stop. Stick around. I want to tell you the story. Let's open up today in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we go into your word, we thank you that your word has the solutions for every challenge, problem, or difficulty that we would ever face in life. So, Father, we explore your word today as eager seekers of truth, and we ask that your Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, would come and illuminate the scriptures, and let the eyes of our heart 
have understanding of what we behold today. Now, Father, we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' great name. Amen. Praise God. This is Jude verse 20. But you, beloved, of course, beloved referring to those that are the believers, those in the church, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit is synonymous with praying or speaking in tongues. Praise the Lord. You know, um, I have met some in the body of Christ that seemed like they would always get the cart before the horse. You know, the horse is supposed to pull the cart, <laughs> but they're somehow trying to put the cart in front of the horse, and it just doesn't work that way. What, what I've seen some do is they are trying to always minister to others. Have you ever seen anybody do this in church before? Have you ever known a Christian do this? They're always trying to minister to others and help others while their own life is a mess. Their own life is underpowered, underachieving, and uh, how can we say, uh, not hitting the ball out of the park. And so, but they still, they just, they, they don't notice their situation. They, they just want to reach out and, and empower others. But I would, I would suggest that it's hard to help others if you yourself are struggling and you yourself are in survival mode. You know, when you're, when you're on an airplane, and I, I know many of you, of course, know what uh, this is like. You sit down in your seat, and before, you know, we, we fly off into the friendly skies, the stewardess says, now, just in case we have some kind of unexpected, you know, trouble or emergency or something like that, you know, the oxygen mask, they'll come down. Uh, and she says, you know, or he says, put yours on first. So we put on our oxygen mask if, if need be, and then, and then we can help others. I remember uh, flying one time when my daughter was very young, and she said, that doesn't seem like a very nice thing. She said, shouldn't you help the other person? Like, Daddy, shouldn't you help me put mine on first? I said, well, if I pass out, though, I can't help you. But I said, if I get mine on first, and now I can breathe, now I can help you. I can help all kinds of people. But if I go down, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not able to help anybody. She goes, okay, that makes sense. So I really believe that in order for us to build up others, we need to be built up ourselves. How? Building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Well, the day is coming, and in some ways it's already here, where charging technology for our appliances our cell phones particularly will um, or already has reached the place where we don't have to keep plugging them in all the time. But even still, they're running off batteries. And until we get over to this nuclear age where we crack the code on nuclear fission or fusion or things like that, uh, where, you know, you could run stuff for a thousand years off the off of something, the grain of a, you know, the size of a piece of a grain of sand. Well, until then, we're going to be plugging things in. Got to charge up the battery. Even if it's a lithium ion battery, those are pretty advanced. Still got to charge those up too. Even if you have a Tesla electric car, still got to charge it up. But you know what? We need to be charged up in our spirits because just as these things in the natural can be drained and lose power, and if your cell phone gets down to, you know, I, I think you could get down to 5%, the cell phone just shuts off. But you know what? We, we shouldn't let ourselves get so drained that we don't function properly. If my, if my cell phone gets below 10%, it's, everything starts going real slow. It doesn't act right. So I, I know I, it needs to get charged back up. <laughs> But you know what? We need to be filled up. We need to be charged up. We don't need to walk around on, you know, 9% or 12% charge. We need to go all the way and get charged up because your faith can be drained. Your spirit can be drained and you need to be in, empowered by the spirit of God every day, every day, staying fully charged. Glory to God. Now, how do we do it? How do we step into it? But you, beloved, building yourselves up, getting that full charge on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, to pray in the Spirit, to speak in tongues, is an exercise of faith. Anytime you do that, 
you are having to use your faith to step into it. Now, I remember when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit, I think it was 1992. It was either 91 or 92, right around that time. And, uh, you know, some, some people are really sharp on dates. Uh, there's only a few dates for whatever reason that I'm really sharp on day, date, time, and all of that. A lot of the other stuff, I, I can't really, uh, you know, tell the difference on some of it, but I do remember exactly what it was like, the, the, the minute details of being filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't really remember uh, what day or something like that, but boy, I'll never forget the experience because it was kind of like frozen in time. Woo! Praise God forever. Mm. But when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit, after having been raised in a denominational church, up until that point, all my life, where the preacher said over and over and over and over, there's no more miracles today. There's no more tongues today. There's no more, you know, I mean, he just, what, that's what you would call from a theological perspective, a cessationist. They believe that all of the gifts, all the miracles ceased when the last apostle, uh, the original 12 apostles died. Well, of course, that's not in the Bible. That's just a theology that some uh, denominations hold to. And I, I had that kind of like ingrained. Well, while I was in that denomination and going to college, uh, I, went, I went one day to a bookstore that was right across the street from the college campus and was just looking at the books. Uh, I, I, I've always loved bookstores. And so I'm in this bookstore looking around and I'm starting to realize all the books in here are like religious books. And so the guy working at the bookstore said, he said, uh, he said, we are a bookstore and a church. And so that explained why all the books were religious books, which I, it made me happy. I was happy to see all these new authors I'd never heard of and uh, all the good religious material. And so uh, he said, the guy working at the bookstore said, we have a church service Wednesday night if you want to come. And, uh, you know, and, you know, I said, well, what kind of a church is this? He said, well, I, you know, we're non-denominational, but I guess you could say we're like Pentecostal, charismatic, or, you know, spirit-filled, basically. I said, okay. And, um, well, to my surprise, I found myself going. I slipped over there on a Wednesday night, and then I slipped over there on a Sunday, and then I think I skipped the Sunday, another Wednesday or something like that, but then went back again after that. And that old saying is true. If you stand on the bank of the river long enough, eventually, watch out, you could very well slip into the water. That's what happened to me. I kept, I kept going back. I, I liked it. I was hearing things I'd never heard before. Now, at the same time, I was also starting to watch TBN, Trinity Broadcast Network. And so having been raised in, the, in a denomination all my life that said no more miracles, I would see these preachers on TV and they're, they're, you know, they're very, uh, how can we say charismatic? And I never saw preaching like that before. Um, a lot of the preaching I grew up with was, um, very, uh, how can I say dry, boring. Yeah. And, and of course, and many people, I'm not joking. Many people would fall asleep during, during the preaching of the pastor's message. Um, so, you know, we, we had no knowledge of the anointing, no knowledge of the power of God, but so all of this is going on in my life while I'm in my early twenties. And I went, I believe it was on a Wednesday night or a Sunday night. I went to the, uh, one of the services and the pastor said, he said, anybody tonight want to be filled with the Holy spirit and speak in tongues? I thought, well, I, I do. Why not? You know, I've, I've, I've been told for years, it's not true, but I, I really believe it is. Uh, but I said, yeah, and I, I do it. So I went up, <laughs> Woo, glory to God. And the pastor laid hands on me and it just began to come out. But it came out very small syllables. And at that point in my spiritual walk, as Jesus had filled me with the Holy Spirit, at that point, it took my maximum faith. It took, it took every bit of my faith to get out those little syllables. Da, 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 la, da, ba, da, da, da. Then it began to go a little faster. Sa, bam, ba, sa, da, da. Then it began to go a little bit more. But I, I, I tell you, I was operating it in every ounce of faith I had to do that. Oh, but today, 
Take me a few decades on down the road where I'm at today. Well, I love the speaking tongues. I love the speaking tongues. Well, Pastor Stephen, why is it so easy for you today just to turn it on like that? Because I've built my faith. Anytime that you speak in tongues, you are exercising your faith. You are doing something that takes you into the supernatural. And so to do that, you have to use your faith. But the more you do it, the stronger your faith gets and the more comfortable you get with it to the point it's just as easy as drinking a glass of water but it wasn't like that when it started out for me I mean the first few days um, that night when I got filled with the Holy Spirit I, I spoke in tongues for hours I didn't want to stop I eventually fell asleep because I, I was tired woke up the next morning and just started speaking in tongues again because uh, my mind was trying to say, oh, is this wrong? And you know, I had enough doctrine to help me have a foundation, but all that old teaching, it, it like was like layers of an onion being peeled off of me over a period of time. And the more of the word I got, the more I began to see, you know, I, I had, uh, I, I really have been robbed of all of the blessings that God has had for me. I had no clue that God still healed. Uh, I, I had no clue that God still did miracles. And, and so I went through the whole process. But when I first began speaking in the spirit, speaking in tongues, it was new for me. Uh, but my faith became stronger. And since then, by God's grace, the Lord has given me and my wife a ministry of getting people filled with the Holy Spirit. And by the Lord's grace, we're very good at it. It's, it's just a gift that God has given us, and I find it very easy to get people filled with the Holy Spirit. And I, I'm talking about people that could be children, people that be, be adults, even those that are quite on uh, into their adulthood. It, it doesn't matter. There's a grace that God has given me to be able to get them filled with the Holy Spirit, because I know what it's like to be walked into it when it's all brand new and so today that's something I really enjoy doing and it's very rare when I go to a church and I don't uh, uh, get people filled with the spirit and the only reason I don't is because sometimes I just don't have time <laughs> because you can only pack so much in the one meeting if I have multiple meetings I'm probably going to get you if, if that's something that you want praise the Lord but oh what a blessing what a blessing to being able to be filled with the spirit and to speak in other tongues building yourself up on your most holy faith and one of those reasons that your faith is being strengthened is because you're exercising your faith by speaking in tongues because it takes faith to do just that praise God let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 I am so happy that you're here today to receive this nourishment about tongues. I tell you what, th this is a gold mine of truth. And as you look at church history and many of the great men and women of God that have been used throughout church history, you'll find that so many of them spoke in other tongues. Glory to God. I remember there was a minister one time that said that John Wesley, of course, John Wesley was the founder of what we know as today as the, as the Methodist Church. Now, Mr. John Wesley told them on his deathbed, please do not start a denomination once I pass away after, you know, based upon, you know, my teachings or whatever. Well, he died and they started the denomination anyhow. <laughs> but he was a great man, great man of God, really moved in the spirit. And a lot of the, a lot of the history of the Methodist Church, even many Methodists today, they have no clue of what the revival fires were really like in the Methodist church when it was burning with the Holy Spirit back in the 1700s. One day uh, a man came up to uh, John Wesley and said, well, he said, we know that tongues is, and miracles are no more for today because we are cessationist. And John Wesley said, no, he said, that is not true. That is not true. We have the French prophets as proof that God still does it today. Oh, by the way, who were the French prophets? Um, if you research it in history, um, sometimes they were called the child French prophets. This was a time, early 1700s, and also early, basically we better go back all the way to the um, early 1600s if we really want to jump into the heat wave of it. But basically the Catholic Church was persecuting the Protestant Christians 
And so the, this was in Europe. And so uh, in one area of southern France, the Catholic Church brought tremendous heat on those who are having what we would call today from an evangelical perspective, born again experience. In other words, getting saved. <laughs> and so uh, they were leaving the Catholic Church because uh, much of it had morphed into religious tradition. And uh, people were having legitimate salvation experiences outside of the Catholic Church. And so the Catholic Church said, you know, we have to, we have to stop this because people are leaving the church. So they, they had judicial authority over that area, and they were able to impose a law, you know, convert back to Catholicism or die. And they also had military authority to send an army to your, your town, your city, your house, and if you would not convert, they could issue, they could usher you the death penalty, and they could also torture you uh, to a great degree. Well, what happened is the Holy Spirit began to fall upon these French, precious uh, French French people who had been born again and saved, and uh, without number, thousands. Uh, some some of the historians said it was innumerous. Hundreds of thousands of people were turned into prophets. Men were turned into prophets that were farmers, that were bakers, would stand up and prophesy the most amazing prophecies. Women that were seamstress and, or, or a cook or whatever, they, they would give the most amazing prophecies, and it began to touch the children. It began to touch the infants. It would touch babies that were only eight or nine days old, and the babies would sit up in the crib and prophesy in high French which only they could speak, you know, at the palace, they, they could, uh, in Versailles, they, they would prophesy the most accurate prophecies. Sometimes in meetings, uh, they would be gathered together in secret because of their faith and the persecution, and they would all be worshiping God, and a baby in its mother's arms, nursing, would stop nursing and would say, the army is coming, we must all disband now, or we'll all be killed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it just, this happened by the thousands and thousands of testimonies. By the way, thousands and thousands died. Uh, many had to flee for their lives. But those were the young French prophets. And the Holy Spirit was poured out so strong that it was like almost all of them got turned into prophets. I'm talking about the born again believers there. Uh, and it was just. Woo, it, it, it was incredible. But you, you could read about it in church history. A lot of fun stuff. And so, my friends, you know, uh, there has always been the moving of the Spirit in every church age, dark ages, Holy Spirit's still been moving. It doesn't matter. All over the world, the Holy Spirit has been moving in every century of the church, miracles, signs, wonders. Now, of course, it's more theologically uh, established today. We had a lot of good ministers break that through and take a lot of persecution but eventually, as it's always the case, the truth will outlive a lie. And so a lot of people today have more of a good understanding of the power of the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, if you look, just as one example, I'll give you two. Let's look at one example. If you want to look at the power of the Holy Spirit and what we would call the Spirit-filled experience, look at television networks. How many networks do you see on satellite or cable? I'm talking ministry or, or Christ, we'll call them Christian networks. How many are there that are not spirit filled? Very, very few. They're almost all spirit filled. Why? It takes the Holy Spirit empowerment to move into that. Whether it's, you know, TBN or Daystar, God TV, Sunlight Broadcasting, Impact Network, or on and on it goes. The majority of them are almost all spirit filled, tongue talking, believing, uh, theologically based Christian networks because of the power of the Holy Spirit. What about, what about, let's go to, I'll give you one more example. What about the largest churches in the world? If you look up the largest churches in the world, uh, just look at the top 20. Why, why are so many of them Pentecostal? Or what we would call, maybe not so much Pentecostal, non-denominational, but they believe in the speaking of tongues. Why is that? Well, is it just another coincidence? No, it's, it's not a coincidence. It's just that when you open your heart to receive what the Holy Spirit has for you, you come into a greater uh, 
power, a greater authority, a greater ability to influence, a greater, a greater ability to touch the earth for the glory of the Lord. We all need the Holy Spirit. We all should be speaking in other tongues. Praise the Lord. I, I, I'm not going to get bogged down with some of the elementary teaching of tongues. I, I, I'm going to take it for granted that the majority of you that are watching me, uh, you're probably, you're probably already spirit filled. You probably, uh, in other words, you're already speaking in tongues. You just want to go deeper. Okay. So if you want to backtrack to elementary core, basic teachings on tongues, you know, we've got those messages archived on live stream, YouTube and other places. So you can pull those up and watch that. But today we want to go further. Woo. Praise God. Now, first Corinthians 14 verse one, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. And again, I want to say it. I've said it many times. I believe out of all the gifts as a spirit filled believer, tongue talking believer, I believe the easiest gift to get up and operating in is the gift of prophecy. Everybody should desire to prophesy. Woo. Yes. For he who speaks in a tongue, verse two, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Anytime and every time you speak in a tongue, you're talking in tongues you're speaking directly to God. Your spirit is communicating with God. So if I, if I speak in tongues, my spirit is directly communicating with God. Well, Pastor Stephen, that sounds like gibberish. No, God understands. Is it, look, it's a spiritual language. This is the thing that so many people don't understand, but I'm going to, I'm going to help. I'm going to help unveil that to you today. You're going to have an apocalypse, a revelation, a pulling back of the curtain. And I want you to see that any time and every time that you speak in tongues, you're beginning to move over into the spirit realm and, and something is happening. Don't you ever think, don't ever think for a moment that speaking in tongues that felt fruitless or unproductive in the, in the spirit, it is doing something. I want to open that up and show that to you today. Now, to your natural mind, unless you interpret or you get the understanding of it later, it's not going to benefit your natural mind. So you can speak in tongues. Your spirit can be charged and empowered. God understands everything you're saying. Your spirit does too as you're communicating with God. But your mind, your intellect is unfruitful from the perspective, well, I'm enjoying this. This is fun, but I have no clue what I'm talking about. That's okay. You can interpret tongues. At times there's an anointing to do that. You can get the interpretation and get in on what's going on with your spirit and God. And um, there's other times when that understanding will just come up and your mind's got it. Oh, I, I just realized for the last 20 minutes, I've been praying for my pastor or whatever the case might be. It, sometimes that revelation just comes. So you don't even really need to interpret the tongue. You got the interpretation of the meaning of what was taking place. So let's continue on. For he who speaks in the tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries or as I believe it's the Weymouth translation says, he speaks divine mysteries, Woo! divine secrets, divine secrets. Oh, hallelujah. We need to be tied into this. This is amazing. So something is happening. You know, there are those moments during that. Th this is very important. This often happens in prayer meetings. You get a bunch of Christians together. I'm talking about Christians that are all praying in the spirit, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. Let's say you get 60 people together. There's an evening service at six o'clock and at five o'clock, everybody's together praying. We've got 60 people praying for the evening service. So we're going to pray for one hour. We're all praying. And what is so cool is when you're praying and speaking in tongues and, and somebody else is praying and suddenly you can understand what somebody else is saying in tongues. Oh, oh, oh. And the moment that happens to you, you're like, I mean, I'm telling you the light goes on. Wow. We really are communicating with God here. It, this really is our spirit speaking directly to God. 
And it's a beautiful thing to experience, to see and hear and understand. And I pray that happens to you. So it's good to have these corporate prayer meetings where we all get together and just pray and go. Because that will happen at times. You just get around it and suddenly the Holy Spirit will he'll give one person the interpretation. And when, when you have that gift of interpretation, and I've had it, ha- you know, it happens to me often. And I can just sit there and I know everything that person is saying in the Spirit. Now to everybody else. It just sounds like so ba 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 ba. You know, it sounds like tongues. But the moment that gift of interpretation hits you, you're just like, I know it. I know exactly. You could just sit there and listen. It just blesses you. But sometimes the Lord wants you to interpret so everybody else can be blessed because it's a corporate word that that person is speaking, and you can interpret and let everybody else know what was just spoken under the the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Oh, so much glory and excitement and fun and so much of an adventure because every time we get together, these types of things can happen, and it even can happen to you when you are alone praying by yourself because you you can have that that grace and anointing to interpret your own tongues as well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse three, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, speaks in a tongue edifies the word edified to build up. It it means to build up big, strong, and powerful. It can be linked in some ways to that of a charge similar to charging up charging up that is what is taking place that's one of the the facets of that meaning there he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself now if you prophesy you can edify the whole church because everybody understands that but if you interpret what was said in the tongue now that's it's the same result everybody can be blessed as well so we need to desire the spiritual gifts why for the building up of the lord's church praise god forever hallelujah by the way when you get over in tongues often you begin to sense angels you can begin to sense angels around you, angels in a meeting. And if it gets real strong where everybody begins to pray in, in tongues and you catch that corporate anointing, like a swell, like it begins to rise that you can get, you can begin to see into the spirit realm. You can begin to see angels. Also, if it helps, you may want to close your eyes because it could be a spiritual vision, but also you can just begin to sense them. You can even know where they're standing at. You can even know what kind of angels just came into the room or into the meeting place. Uh, th- this is very, very important. Uh, Hebrews chapter one, Hebrews chapter one, verse 14, are they referring to angels? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? You will inherit salvation. I know you're saved. And from one perspective, you're already born again. You're on your way to heaven. But when it talks about uh, here in verse 14 will inherit salvation. That's basically referring to crossing the finish line. When it's all said and done, you cross the finish line, you're in heaven, it's complete. So until that point, you need angelic help, you need angelic support. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? The more you speak in tongues, the more you pray in the spirit, the more sensitive you become to the angelic realm. And, you know, you begin to pray to the Lord. Uh, the, The Holy Spirit helps you as you get over in the spirit and you just begin to cry out, God, send the angels that I need. Lord, send the financial angels to round up provision. Lord, I need some provision. If you need a job, Lord, send, send the angels of employment. Lord, I need a job. The more you pray in the spirit and speak in tongues, the busier your angels are. And I, I, I think there are some of you that are watching me today where your angels have really been on, on the unemployment bench. You have not gotten them involved in your life, but you need to pray in the spirit and you catch that anointing. It very, very often when you pray in the spirit strongly and for a a, a lengthy period of time, the Holy Spirit starts bringing up the subject of angels and you're, you start thinking, I wonder why I'm thinking about Hebrews 114, because the Holy Spirit wants you to cry out to the father, God, send the angels, send the angels. See, prayer is very effective when you're in that anointing, where you're in that anointing, strike, ask, 
Praise God. You, you, you begin to move in the spirit and cry out to the Lord. Lord, send the angels. Lord, I, I need angelic help. Lord, I need deliverance. Lord, send the angels of deliverance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, send an angel over the brother so-and-so's house and let that spirit of depression be driven off his life and just begin to cry out to the Lord. Mm, I believe there's angels of longevity. Woo. Hallelujah. Mm. All kinds of angels wearing all different types of clothing. I've seen angels wear many different types of clothing, different colors, different, di different types that they, they, they don't all wear white robes. And when you're really charged up strong, you know how to engage an angel should the Lord begin to open up your eyes and you see into the spirit realm and there's an angel standing there. It just flows out of you. What is it that you have to say? You, you, you know how to talk. I mean, if somebody that came up to you, a, a real, a, like a human person and stood in front of you, you would probably say, um, D do you need something? Are you here to say something? Well, in the spirit realm, when you're really fully charged and you're, you're just strong in the spirit, you just, you're just really good at conversation and you see an angel. And if the angel doesn't begin talking, you can just say, well, I'm glad you're here. I see you standing here. What is it that you have to say? <laughs> oh, praise God. Woo. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So speak in tongues and the angelic realm will become much more of a reality to you. And they will begin to work strongly, strongly, strongly. And you'll, you'll see within two or three days answered prayers because they're on it. They're on it. Woo. Praise God. Hallelujah. I really believe that as you speak in tongues, as you talk in tongues, that it brings a cleansing. You know, I think it's worse in the city when it comes to uh, profane things. Because if you're in the city, you, you, have, you have a lot of people, people walking down the street, and you hear people's conversations, even, even if you're not trying to, sometimes you just hear things and you hear people say the most uh, vile profanity out in public. They, they, they don't care. They're so callous, so brazen. They, they don't care. And, and some of the most awful things are talked about. And some things also we, we uh, unintentionally see with our eyes. But when you pray in the spirit, you begin to come over into the realm of the Holy spirit and you get into the presence of the Lord and there's cleansing. Yes, we're cleansed by the blood of the G, uh, the blood of Jesus, our savior, but also the Lord's presence the Lord's presence bring, brings a soothing peace, but it also just, as you speak in tongues, it helps decontaminate from all the junk of the world, and it just helps cleansing with your mind, where all the things that are seen and heard and things like that, it just, it just falls away, falls away. So it just helps drive out all the profane and unclean things and helps you become more spiritually minded. It helps your heart to extend and to reach out to God. Praise the Lord forever. You know, something will happen to you when you pray in the spirit for a lengthy period of time. I, when I say lengthy, I would just say anything over one hour. I even think 40 minutes. If you, if you do 40 minutes in tongues, you're already going into a place that a lot of ministers don't even go. You go over an hour, you're doing really good. You start going out beyond that. Uh, it, does, it doesn't take long to get over into what I would call the rare air. Don't, don't think there's a lot of people out there. There's not. <laughs> I know there's a big planet. I know there's over 7 billion people now. But even still, the, there even uh, you know we have to look at the, the Christian realm. There's not a lot of people that are really venturing out there. Uh, if you look at the whole sum of, of those that are venturing into the deeper things of the Lord. So feel free. Feel free to eat from the buffet table of God all that you want. Consume all of the Lord that you want praise God. But anything over an hour, I'd say it would probably be, be considered from my perspective, a lengthy period of time of speaking in tongues. I think it's very important as much as possible. If you're going to do that, to just uh, try to do it unhindered, unblocked, unstopped. In other words, if you start, just try to go for an hour real strong, 
real fast. But if, if you get all kinds of interruptions, it'll, it'll, it'll break that flow of anointing. But you can tell when that oil is flowing, that oil of the Spirit, and it's just like you don't even want to stop. You don't want to even get in. You don't want to speak any, any English at all. Just straight tongues. Woo! Glory. You don't even want to get into the English or something. Why? You don't want to get out of that flow of the Spirit. It is a glorious place to be. Now, if you go deeper than an hour, and you maybe get out there over maybe three, five hours, and just do it for a couple days. I'm not, I'm not even sure if you can sustain it, but if you could, just I, I want to present something to you. Something will begin to happen to you, and it's what happens to me when I really just stay in it, stay in it, stay in it. You get over into a place where your whole life, the Holy Spirit will begin to frame everything in a poetic picture. You, you, you could be talking with your spouse about something, and then you turn around, and the very thing you're talking about, you see it written on the back of somebody's van. Or, you know, you go to work, and uh, you're working on a piece of paper at work, and as soon as you finish that paper, you turn around to put it on the, fo- on the file folder, and you see a news report flash by, and it's, a, it's exactly about what you're just turning in or something. It just, everything begins to go into a po- poetic type. He begins to frame everything. It's like he's, it's like everything starts getting consumed with God. You see God everywhere. You see God in on everything. You see God is all he's overall and he's winning Uh, he's winning he's glorious he's wonderful you begin to see the glory but everything begins to have like a rhyme to it Uh, it's it's become it becomes poetic and it's not like you're trying to make it happen it just it it just everything begins to get framed like that but it only begins to happen if you really really start getting out there in the spirit but oh my goodness it's it's quite interesting it'll start happening all the time if you do that um one day, me and Kelly were having lunch with Bob and Bonnie Jones, and uh, Bob Jones was, he was sitting there at the table with me at the Cracker Barrel, a Cracker Barrel restaurant, and he was talking about the Angel Breakthrough. Now, I had met the Angel Breakthrough once while in a meeting once in Cleveland, Ohio, the Angel Breakthrough came into the service, and of course, you know, it was uh, Bob Jones. He was one of the ones that began talking often about the, the Angel uh, called Breakthrough. Well, we're sitting at the table, me and Kelly, Bob and Bonnie, and Bob begins to talk about the angel breakthrough. And he says, he says, do you feel that wind? I said, yes, I, I, and a wind begins to come all around the, all around the table. It's not the air conditioning vents. Okay. Uh, I, I check things like that out. It's not, but it's, it's the winds of the spirits, the angels of God moving. And he was talking about how the angel breakthrough was chopping wood uh, getting things prepared for the great work that God is going to be doing of evangelism and revival, but he's, he's preparing. It's a preparing mode, and so that preparing mode, the angel breakthrough and the other breakthrough angels beneath him, it's kind of like the preparation mode. Bob kind of called it like chopping wood. And while we're talking, in the moment that wind starts sweeping, Bob, uh, he says, look, and right next to us, something we've never seen the whole time, there's a picture of a man chopping wood right next to us. All I'm trying to say is, if you get over in the spirit and you start staying there, visiting there, going into that place regularly, everything starts getting framed like that. Everything's poetic. Everything's kind of like lines up, and it's just like uh, it's quite remarkable. It's like it's like inner witness, immediate outward witness. So, you know, it's a wonderful place to be. I really believe that's the way it was for Adam and Eve in the garden. It's just walking in the spirit all the time. Uh, Enoch walking in that all the time. <laughs> you, you sense somebody's going to call you and, and then the phone rings. It, it just gets very, very interesting. Let, let's continue on. Let's continue on today. We're talking in, today about building ourselves up, praying in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and I want you to get over into the meat and potatoes of it. Because I've taught on this a little bit about extending yourself out there into this. And whenever I've taught on it, I get these testimonies back. And it is amazing the testimonies I get back from people that, how can I say, they try it, they give it a shot. And then, you know, like, well, I got an email just the other day. Uh, A lady said her and her sister 
heard my teaching about praying in tongues for extended periods of time. So they went off and I, I don't know how long prayed in tongues for hours and hours and hours nonstop. And, uh, you know, the whole time the, the sister, I think, um, I can't remember what she had. She, she was, she had something really wrong with her body. She's, uh, you know, going into surgery in three days, they do all this praying in tongues. And, uh, just before she's about to go into the surgery, they do one more test, to, you know, make sure. Okay. And then the doctors are totally puzzled because the, the reason she's going into surgery, the whole thing, it's left her body. It's gone. And the doctor said, you don't need any surgery. Just go home. You're, you know, I mean, I'm just saying every time people do things like this, go off into the spirit, I'm getting emails. Uh, Pastor Stephen, I got healed. I got healed. I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking about healing. I just worshiping the Lord, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. And the next thing I know, this thing has left my body. Glory to the Lord. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Hallelujah. So there is the adventure of it in the spirit. But I'm telling you, this is a this uh, this is your heart talking to God. When I say your heart, I'm talking about the inner man, not the blood pumping organ. This is the spirit of, of who you are communicating with God. And there's a lot going on. It affects your mind from the, from the perspective of enhancing your mind, uh, bringing clarity and sharpness to your mind. I believe it, I believe it even brings strength to your body, healing to your body. Praise the Lord. There's a lot about it. I don't under, I don't understand, but I know this, it works. It absolutely works. It will, it will build your faith and it is it, touching all kinds of areas of your life. Praise the Lord. Now, what happened to me? I want to go back in time uh, decades ago. This was even before I was married. Um, I had a situation where I, I just, you know, living in Texas, I, I knew, I knew somehow I'm, I'm, I'm in my twenties. I'm living in Texas and I knew somehow that I was supposed to go to Southern California. Well, you know, I, I began to get, I began to pick that up. The more I prayed about it, I began to get that picked up in my spirit. And you know, when you're young in the Lord, because I'd only been filled with the spirit uh, a couple of years at this point, when, it, when you're young in the Lord, uh, you don't always have that wisdom to kind of sort it all out. So I put, I, I kind of rushed and I thought, well, it must be now. And so I tried, I tried to like make it happen and it never had any lift off. Um, I, I remember it was a uh, early Sunday morning. I got up there uh, and I, you know, it, living in Texas, I went to church and I told myself after the church service, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to California. I'm going to, I'm going to move. I believe God wants me to do it. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, the timing of the Lord. Nevertheless, I, I couldn't quite f discern that. I should have just waited till I knew it was for later, but I was excited. I was young. And so I packed my car full, didn't tell my pastor. I lived behind my pastor in a little efficiency. I lived right behind his house, renting from him. I didn't even tell my pastor I was going to leave and go to California, uh, because I was so sure that I was doing the right thing. So I loaded my car full of everything I had. Didn't take very long because I didn't have very much. And I, I drove the church. I was going to, I was going to do my normal thing. I was going to sing in the choir, shout in the church, have a good time. And soon, soon as the service over, not tell anybody leave, go to California. <laughs> Woo! But I, I got my car. So I drove the church, right? And I, I, I got there early. I always got there very early and, and I parked my car in the parking lot, started walking towards the church and the, the doors to the church. I mean, it was like something out of a movie. The two double doors of the church just like exploded open. And the head prayer intercessor walked through those doors. She had white on. I don't, she was wearing white that day. She walked through those doors. I still remember her name. I remember exactly who she was. She said, Brother Brooks, she said, I don't know what you're about to do, but God told me to tell you, don't do it. You kept me up all night praying for you. <laughs> I said, oh man, I got to go home and unpack all this stuff. Well, nevertheless, I did go to church that day, sang in the choir, shout it in the church service and went home and unpacked everything. So I realized there's timing, there's timing to these things. Okay. Two years later, two years go by. Two years go by, I'm working in the best job I've ever had with a company that had been in business for over 80 years. I had my own office. I could put my feet up on my desk and act like, you know, I was going somewhere. I was going to climb the corporate ladder. It was exciting, making more money than I ever made before. And, you know, I saw, I saw like the, the potential to, 
you know, have stability and, and a good life, which there's nothing wrong with that. So I was excited, you know, I was happy about my, my job and so forth. They like me. I like them. Everything's going great. And so, you know, I would get up early in the morning to pray before I, I would go to work. So I got up and I began to pray. It was right around six o'clock when I was praying. And it's like the moment my knees touched the floor to start praying, uh, uh, the moment my knees touched the floor, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, leave immediately and go to California. Well, I had flashbacks to two years ago and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, uh, I, uh, I tried that two years ago, you know, and I, and the, you know, the sister so-and-so came out of the church doors and told me it wasn't right. And I knew it wasn't right. I knew the timing. I uh, realized now it wasn't right. But I said, I, I don't want to have another experience like that. And, and I, I felt like such, the Holy Spirit stro- spoke to me so strong, but I'm thinking, I, I, I don't know. I've blown it before and I don't want to blow it again. And so I kept on praying. 610, 10 minutes later, like a wave. Okay. Uh, look, look, when these things are real, they're real. When, when, you know, if you're not sure, then back way off. But when it's real, there's no guesswork. You'll know it's real. You don't need to try to fabricate something. Just let God be God. Okay. You don't, you don't need to have something happen just to have something happen. Just let your life be lived out the way God wants it to. But should it happen, be ready. Praise the Lord. Well, 610, another wave of the Holy Spirit came over me and he said, leave immediately and go to California. He didn't even tell me to turn in the two week notice, which I normally would do any other job I've done when it was time to move on. When it was time to go into the ministry full time, I gave my two week notice, but he didn't even say to do that. And I didn't know how I would explain it. Nevertheless, uh, by eight o'clock that morning, within two hours, I had packed my car full of everything I had, which wasn't much, drove to work and uh, realized that I was going to be driving all day because I'm leaving. And so I didn't have my, I didn't have my work clothes on my office dress clothes, I had comfortable driving clothes on. And I went, I went to go see the boss, but he saw me walking before I, I could even get to him. He said, Stephen, what's going on? Cause he realized something's up. Cause I don't have my work clothes on. I said, John, I, I said, I need to talk to you. He goes, well, come on into my office. And this big, beautiful executive office, big, big desk, desk, beautiful leather chair, the whole nine yards of the CEO image. So I'm sitting across from him and I said, John, I, I don't know how to explain this to you. He said, oh, Stephen, just go ahead and say, just go ahead and say it. I said, okay. I said, I woke up this morning and the Holy Spirit told me to leave immediately and to go to California. And he said, stop. He said, stop. Don't say another word. And he pulled open uh, his, his desk drawer, just like this, pulled up a bottle, to pull the bottle out of there that was about this big of anointing oil. And he walked around to the other side where I was sitting, opened it up and poured the whole thing on my head and said, go. He said, I'll mail your check when you get there. Just tell me where to send it to when you find out where you're going. He said, where are you going? I said, I don't know. Somewhere in Southern California. I don't know. <laughs> he said, he said, it'll be all right. So it was, it was a wild experience. So I leave, I leave the, the office and I'm just like, I'm almost like shaking because th- this is just like, uh, this has never happened to me before. And it's not like I want something like that to happen again. I, you, you know, it's like, you, you don't need stuff like that happen on a regular basis. You need stability. You need, you need your solid job. You need your solid life. But this was one of those moments. This was one of those days that altered my life forever. And so uh, I figured, you know, as, as I'm leaving the workplace saying goodbye, knowing I'll never see them again. And I never have knowing I'm going to a state that uh, this, you know, I don't know anything about, never been there, don't know anybody, no, you know, this is long before cell phones or anything, I don't even think we had pagers, maybe we had pagers, but I didn't have one, so it, this is a total step of faith, I thought this would probably be a good thing for me to do, go by and tell my pastor, well, I drove out of the church, and I was going to tell my pastor I'm leaving, I'm going to California, and the secretary said, he's not here. He's out of the country. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll just write, I've wrote him a letter. I said, I love you. Thank you for everything. God bless you. Goodbye. And, um, and I realized in hindsight, it was the Holy Spirit that 
arranged it where he was not there because if he had been there he probably would have tried to have talked me out of it where are you going what job do you have lined up who are you staying with i didn't have any of that none of that and it, it was it was sounding kind of crazy but the bottom line if god's in it god's in it if, if you get his word it will hold you up and so uh i left and i began my drive from texas the middle of texas all the way to california well By the time I hit the road, after leaving my office, going by the church, pastor not there, and and now getting actually on the interstate and driving, it's probably like, I don't know, probably right around nine o'clock in the morning. And I just said, well, I got a long drive. I don't don't know where I'm going and I don't know how this is going to pan out. So I said, I'm just going to start praying in the spirit. So I had a big uh, uh, plastic bottle of water and I began to pray in the spirit. Now watch this. I was in a place where I knew God spoke to me. I couldn't deny that I had heard the voice of God. I was young in the Lord, but I could not deny that I knew for a fact that God had spoken to me and told me to do this, but my mind is giving me a hard time. My heart knows, but my mind is, you know, is thinking, well, you know, I'm actually doing this now. This is, whoo, no, no, you know, no turning back. And so I, what brought soothing comfort to me was to pray in the Holy Spirit because it would calm me down. Not not that I was nervous or I wasn't fearful. I just was just like, Lord, this is wild. I've never done anything like, like this before. And so this, I'm just flying with you. So uh, the more I prayed in the spirit, the better I felt. So I just kept praying in the spirit, but I did it strong. I was praying like this. I wasn't praying like this. No, no, I wasn't praying like that. I was praying like this. You know, you do that for an hour, you're, you get tired. Well, I did that from nine o'clock in the morning all the way till nine o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. And I remember at night, because by this time I'm into the mountainous area of New Mexico and climbing these mountains, going through these mountain passes and all of that. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I felt like the devil said, your car's going to break down. And, you know, the car could have gone at any moment. I, the, I had no oil in the engine. I didn't know that. Um, I found out later that the oil pan was dry. Ca- uh, tires are all bald, bald, no tread on them. Uh, the car's 24 years old. And so, but I just kept praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit. And so I started getting up higher in elevation, temperatures drop. It's getting late at night. I rolled the window down so I can get fresh air to get really woke up. And I just kept praying in the spirit. It, get, it kept getting closer and closer to like midnight. Uh, but I just kept praying in the spirit. Well, by this time I had been praying in the spirit for probably almost about 15 hours, nonstop. I'm strong. <coughs> my mouth was tired. My tongue was tired. My teeth were tired. Just drinking water, praying in the spirit. But something happened. It seemed like the Holy Spirit suddenly began to energize me with a power I had never felt before in my life. And my tongues, it's like turned in the fire. And I began to pray like a man from another planet. And I began to pray so strong. And I'm driving. (laughs) I'm driving to the mountains of New Mexico right around the area of Rio Doso, I think. And I'm just, I'm just speaking in tongues so strong. Pastor Stephen, was it like warfare tongues? Well, I really wouldn't call it warfare. I I don't think tongues are really for warfare or for peace. It's just for it's just for communicating with God. But I was uh, tongues are for communicating with God. But the Holy Spirit was just flowing through me with power, and uh, uh, I don't know what I was praying, but it was just I was praying the absolute one hundred percent perfect will of God, and it was pouring through me like molten lava. And it was, it was coming out, I was just praying so strong. I thought, Lord, I don't know how long I can sustain this. This is, this is such an energy pull. I don't think I can do this much longer. But it got a little bit stronger, and then it broke. And when it broke, peace washed over me. A peace that was from heaven. 
and I looked out of the window. Something, something quickened me to look up. I looked out of the window at night, not a cloud in the sky. I could see the moon. I could see the stars. And I could, I saw when I looked up right when that, that, that breaking moment came, I looked up and an evil principality came falling out of the sky. He looked like a meteor. Oh, Pastor Stephen, you saw a meteor. No, no, no. Meteors don't have wings. This thing was falling. It looked like some kind of like demonic prince who had fallen out of his position from there in the second heaven, and he was falling the earth. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw the same thing from the perspective of what the Lord told me was a was an evil principality assigned by Satan to my life to abort my destiny that the ministry and the calling that God had for my life, that enemy was assigned so that it would never be fulfilled. Mm, 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 mm. Can you fulfill your destiny without walking in the spirit? I, I don't see how anybody could. Can you go to heaven? Without, without it, oh, oh, absolutely. You can go to heaven with, with all kinds of flaws, and not, not, not that I would encourage you to. You can go to heaven with uh, all types of um, uh, hang-ups and quirks, and, uh, uh, you know, I, wouldn't, I would encourage you to get them healed and get your life ironed out, so to speak. But you can have a lot of issues and still go to heaven because your faith and trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you hold to Him as your anchor of, of salvation. So you can go to heaven, but if you want to go to heaven, and fulfill, ha- having fulfilled and completed your destiny, I would highly encourage you to be filled with the Spirit and to speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. Because the enemy, he's a schemer. He's a thief. He is a thief of destiny. He, 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 um, he just, um, he's very, very witty. And you need the power of the Holy Spirit and you need the angels of God with you in order to go into the fullness of what God has for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That thing came falling out of the sky, fell, 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 and and like imploded. It was gone. I don't know if an angel took him and wrapped him with chains and pulled him down. I don't know what happened. But you have the first, second, and the third heaven. I'm not talking about the heaven from the realm of where God is at, uh, which was up into third heaven. But the second heaven is the area where the airplanes fly at. 30,000 feet, 40,000 feet. And that's where Satan has his kingdom. He is the prince of the power of the air. And there's many spirits up there. Uh, A lot of the lower spirits are down here, but a lot of the ones that rule and govern, they're up there telling others down here what to do. Well, that one that was up there trying to destroy my destiny, uh, he got the boot. He got the boot and down he came. Woo! And on I went. Hallelujah. I made it to where God wanted me to be at that season of my life. Walked into a church and said, this is where God will raise me up in ministry. And he did. That man is still my spiritual father today. Walked into that church and met the most beautiful and wonderful woman in the world by, who became my wife. And now, you know, I have a family. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. My friends, I don't know what I would have done without the Holy Spirit. But I have a feeling that if it were not for the Holy Spirit, I'd be sitting back in an office somewhere selling farm equipment. That's what we sold, the uh, irrigation equipment to farmers. Not that there's anything wrong for that, but that was not my calling. That was not my calling. So today, I could either be getting people saved and getting people filled with the Spirit by countless numbers, which I've done and will continue to do in ministering the Word of God to the nations, or I could have been sitting around selling irrigation valves for the farmers. Would you like another three-inch water valve? You know, you know, nothing wrong with that. That's a noble calling and a noble job, but it's not what God had for me. It's not what he had for me. Pastor Stephen, what's the greatest thing I can do? Fulfill the destiny and calling that God has for you. And if it's to sell irrigation equipment, you better be selling irrigation equipment. If it's driving a tractor, you better be driving that tractor. If it's putting satellites in orbit, you better be, you better be uh, uh, putting them up there. Praise the Lord. You know, 
takes a whole team to do that, of course, but you know what I mean. You, you need to be plugged into what you're supposed to do, and you're going to need the Holy Spirit. And any time you feel blockage, you need to pray in the Spirit. Get over in the Spirit. But let me swing back just for a moment. I want to come back to this. You and I both know that we're saved by grace through faith. We also know that the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit word of wisdom, word of knowledge, special faith, uh, gifts of healings, working of miracles, prophecy, uh, discerning the spirits, uh, tongues, interpretation of other tongues. We also know that those are grace gifts as well. You can't earn them, but at the same time, Paul said, pursue the Lord eagerly for them. So um, here's the thing. I want to balance this with grace and pursuit. It was the grace of God that that night a destiny moment happened for me where Satan's plan for my life was broken. And I, I went into the blessing that God, the Canaan land that God had for me at that season of my life. I stepped into what he had for me, but I prayed for 15 hours strong as as strong as I could. You know, you get a little tired after a few hours, but I kept on going just as strong as I could to my, my jaw, my jaws, on both sides were sore the next day. I I felt a whole lot better the next day, by the way. And it was the next day that Jesus healed my eyes. He healed my eyes the next day. So that night I received a great deliverance and a breakthrough the next day. The next day, my, my tremendous eye condition. I've almost been legally blind was healed 15 hours of nonstop praying in tongues. I I dare you to, I dare you to touch. I dare you to touch Jude verse 20. I dare you to touch it. Why is it that I have a burning feeling within my spirit that if you do something like that, I'm going to be checking my email at contact at stephenbrooks.org and I'm probably going to be hearing from you. Why is it I have a burning sense in my spirit that should you take God at his word that I'm going to be hearing some type of supernatural testimony from you? Praise God. People that listen to these messages about praying for extended periods of time in tongues tell me they're praying in a pursuit of getting close to the Lord. And the next thing they know, the next day they're totally healed. And they didn't even ask God to heal them. What is going on? Power, the power of God, power of God, the building up your, of your faith into explosive power, Mm, cleansing, purging, close walk with God. (laughs) And other things that we, we don't have enough time to pack it all in the one sermon. My friends, I encourage you, go for it. Go for it. Get over into the glory. Make time. If you, have a, if you have a long drive, hey, this is great for truckers. This is great for prisoners. This is great for those that have, let's say you have something mundane to do with your hands. You can do it so good you don't even have to think, okay? And uh, you can just pray in the spirit. So ba 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 so da ba 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 so ba 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 so ba 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 so da ba 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 ba. And watch for that flow. Watch for that anointing. If it takes ten minutes or forty minutes, look for the anointing where it just you feel like a river is coming through you. Now, when you get that, do not come out until you've drunk all you can drink of God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah! But um. It works really good when you have something that you can do where people will not interrupt you. Um, I'm talking about phone calls, conversation, that those things will pull you out of it. Okay. But if you can have those special moments, I realize you probably can't do this every day, but you can, you know, you might not even be able to do it every week or two, but look for those times you can. And when you, you got it or God gives it to you, you know, you've got an eight hour drive and you're the only one in the car. Well, Pastor Stephen, I'm going to listen to the news all day long. I've got, I've got, you know, I've got XM radio. Well, what about supernatural radio? Why don't you just turn your radio off and for the entire eight hour drive, do nothing but pray in tongues as strong and as fast as you can. 
Why is it that I believe if you do that, I'll be getting an email from you about a miracle that God has wrought in your life? Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching today that they find inspiration from your word to step out into the deep blue waters of your glory and to receive from you the next level blessing that you have for them to step into. Thank you, Father God. Orchestrate their schedule supernaturally in Jesus' name so that this might be divine opportune moments for them to exercise speaking in other tongues. Father, we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Let's take Holy Communion. Please grab some unleavened bread and some grape juice. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we bless and consecrate the bread and the juice. This is now the flesh and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we receive the body of Jesus by faith. We thank you for your great miracle working power. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive the body of Jesus. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you that Jesus is all that we need and that in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And that as we pray in the spirit and speak in other tongues, we tap into his wisdom and knowledge that is revealed to us. Take us, O God, into your treasury of wisdom and knowledge in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive the blood of Jesus. God's got answers. Seek him. Seek his face. In tongues, prayed in the spirit. He'll open his hand to you. He'll give you answers. He will not withhold any good thing from you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you back next time.